Oh, hold up a second. Cat people? Really? What's next? Possum people? Well, this special episode, it dives into territory I haven't really gone into before. Right meow. This very second. Anyone with a passing interest in the subject is well acquainted with the so-called celebrities of cryptozoology. You have Bigfoot, the wild man who prowls the forest of North America, and its cousin, the Yeti, which howls from the top of the highest peaks of the Himalayas. You also have Nessie, the infamous monster which allegedly lurks beneath the waves of the Scotland's Loch Ness. Anyone with a deeper interest in cryptids might even know about Mothman, the winged monstrosity that has harassed Point Pleasant, West Virginia, starting in 66, or the half-human, half-canine known as Dogman that strikes abject terror into the hearts of witnesses. But far fewer folks realize that an even more bizarre human-animal hybrid has a long history of sightings all around the world. Yes, cat people, a nightmarish merger of a human and feline anatomy. Like Dogman, these beasts are unprecedented in the fossil record, but nonetheless appear throughout eyewitness reports time and time again. In many of these stories, cat people seem to arise out of nowhere, only return back to wherever they came, never to be seen again in the area raising the question of whether we were dealing with a physical creature or something far more sinister of the metaphysical. In July of 1964, two campers near California's Mount Tamalpais in Marin County found themselves essentially held captive in their tent. The culprits seemed to be a pair of creatures they had observed shortly before setting up camp. Both witnesses described the beings as half cat, half human. They stood around five feet tall, weighing at least 200 pounds, but lacked any noticeable tails. As in many Bigfoot descriptions, the witnesses said that their heads sat close to their shoulders, almost neckless, atop their muscular chests. It wasn't until later in the day that they heard the two creatures calling back and forth to each other in a fashion described as chittering. The campers stayed in their tent, refusing to do so much as peek outside until the noises had stopped. Now, four years later, a similar monster was seen through a window in the rural outskirts of Lorraine, Ohio, on November 9th. Around 5.45 in the morning, a married couple by the name of Cat Aldo awoke after something large smacked the roof of their home. When the sound shifted towards the window... They discovered two massive paws sitting on the windowsill, an enormous inhuman face peering inside. The thing it most closely resembled was a 600 pound lion, yet its coat was a dusky grayish brown, slightly lighter towards its front. Mr. Cataldo immediately leapt from his bed to fetch his shotgun and return to the bedroom. The cat person was gone and Cat Aldo briefly stormed out of the house, barely able to catch the shape of something running on two legs around the home's east side. It swayed side to side with an ape-like gait, and the witness later estimated the cat person had stood around six feet tall. As evidence corroborating their experience, the Cat Aldos were able to produce a pair of handprints from the windowsill. Curiously, these appeared human and, in a bizarre detail, seemed to be reversed. Paranormal researcher and author Barton Nunnally noted that this same hand orientation appeared during a September 1973 cat person sighting in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. As in Ohio, the hands were reversed, or more accurately, placed backward. It was only around a year later in 1969 when another cat person appeared in Niles, Michigan. A man driving down alone an isolated road saw something approaching the shoulder and slowed down for a closer look. If at first he thought it was a person or a deer, all doubt was removed after the animal charged his automobile. It was a bipedal cat person and seemed enraged at having been spotted. The beast shattered the car windows in four separate places with its oversized clawed fist before the driver was able to make a hasty retreat. The creature issued a horrifying squeal as it shrank in the rearview mirror. 
This spate of cat person sightings in the Midwest continued into 1970. In April, another motorist by the name of Mike Busby of Cairo, Illinois, was traveling Route 3 towards Olive Branch to pick up his wife when he experienced some car trouble about a mile before reaching his destination. The roadway, which at this location ran parallel to the Shawnee National Forest, was dark and deserted. But... In the era before cellular phones, Mike had no choice but to diagnose the problem himself. Mike pops the hood of his car to begin scrutinizing the engine. Before he had even a chance to see what was wrong, he hears a noise to his left. A dark figure form standing six feet tall rushed him and struck him in the face, knocking him to the blacktop. Now, whatever it was, the figure had Mike pinned to the ground and began slashing at his clothing with razor sharp claws. And as the two struggled and tumbled, he manages to get his hands near the creature's muzzle, holding its sharp teeth at arm's length to prevent it from seizing his own throat. The stakes were so high that Mike's description of his attacker reads more like a series of impressions than a detailed portrayal. He remembered feeling woolly hair around the creature's mouth, a sharp contrast to the short, wiry hair that covered the rest of its body. The coat almost felt like steel wool. Mike later said that the thing kept letting out these deep, soft growls. Those sounds were unlike anything that I have ever heard. He was able to keep the beast at bay until a passing diesel truck rolled up to the scene, its loud motor and bright headlights apparently frightening the creature away. It darts into the forest, affording Mike one final view of his would-be killer. He later told investigators that the creature was a sleek, shiny black color and it ran away with a heavy, thudding feet. The driver of the truck was able to be a bit more specific. He described it as a giant cat that fled on two legs. Mike was rushed to town where he received medical treatment for his wounds. Cat people can be found around the world because in 1972, a maintenance worker at a car factory near Cordoba, Argentina, had a brush with the unknown that he would never forget. The witness was Teodoro Merlo, aged 56. He had taken a break from making his rounds to visit the factory's washroom, but found that the space was already occupied. Allegedly, an eight-foot-tall creature was casually perched atop a wash bin, gazing at him with a pair of striking feline eyes. The entity appeared to be some sort of cross between a human and a cat, covered in pale fur. Its face bore brown markings on the cheeks, a high forehead, pointed ears, and a distinctly feline triangular nose. Most peculiarly, it was clad in a form-fitting dark blue one-piece uniform that extended to its wrists. The creature apparently vanished, but the sighting left Merlo with lingering ailments in the form of back pain and a pounding headache. That evening on the ride home, he saw the cat person yet again in the rearview mirror of the bus he was riding, but it vanished just as it had earlier. It would be easy to dismiss his sighting as a hallucination or a hoax, but this is not the last time that witness at the factory would report this strange feline presence. Enrique Moreno was delivering documents to the site on his motorcycle when he happened upon what he described as a sort of rainbow very near the ground. Within moments of spotting this apparition, he noticed a shockingly tall, thin presence in the pathway ahead. It looks in his direction, revealing what he said were eyes like yellow light bulbs, ears that rose above the skull in point, a square chin, and a slit-like mouth. As in Merlo's sighting, the being was decked out in a one-piece garment, although this time it shone a luminescent turquoise. Immediately, Moreno's body began itching all over and an incessant drone filled his ears. At this point, he either slipped into a trance state, or, as he claimed, his motorcycle started driving itself. Either way, he found himself back at his office, suffering from after effects, much as Merlo had. Headaches, burning eyes, and other ailments whose source was difficult to pinpoint. Returning to North America, 
a British Columbian logging crew, endured persistent oddities around their work site in 1973. Hooting sounds, something like they had never heard before, would fill the woods as they felled trees. This, of course, is a common behavior attributed to Bigfoot, and British Columbia is certainly Bigfoot territory. But whatever was prowling their camp was no Bigfoot. Maybe it was Pussyfoot, judging from the prints left behind. Paw prints, like those that would be left behind by a gigantic cat, were found in the fresh mud each day. Perhaps some speculated a mountain lion was stalking them. Well, eventually, the foreman, a gentleman by the name of Woods, heard the hooting calls while walking in Cedar Swamp area. They were so close that he fled, terrified, back to his caterpillar truck. And from that day forward, he refused to appear at work unless he had a pistol at his hip. Woods eventually saw the creature responsible for the calls and footprints. He was driving the caterpillar when he heard a loud noise coming up from behind. Looking nervously over his shoulder, Woods saw what he initially took to be a mountain lion. However, unlike a mountain lion, the creature gracefully landed not on four legs, but on two, stretching lazily as if it had just awoken from a cat nap and then leapt across a skid and into the trees on the other side, leaving Woods with the impression that, whatever it was, it had been half feline, half primate. These sightings eventually caught the attention of a renowned Bigfoot hunter, Rene DeHinden, who visited the site. DeHinden spent 10 days scrutinizing the area for anything unusual. While a sighting of the cat person eluded him, he supposedly did discover the nesting site of some large animal, as well as three different kinds of tooth markings on trees in the area. In November of 1980, multiple witnesses in Maryland reported a cat person, which frequented a lover's lane, dubbed the Cat Man. The creature earned a fearsome reputation for its habit of peering in through the car windows of amorous young couples. Every witness agreed upon the exact same thing. It was a large, hairy monster covered in black fur, sporting long claws. Its eyes were unmistakably feline, and it had the ability to move around on two or four legs of its choosing. Note, how Bigfoot are often spotted doing the same thing, lurking about lover's lanes and dropping to all fours when it suits them, begging the question of whether these two phenomena are related. One of the best stories of the Wicomico Catman comes from autumn of 1980, for youths were parked near a landfill along the river when a pair of ominous, glowing eyes appeared in the window. The driver sped away, and once they had escaped, the witnesses gathered their courage and several friends to return to the site. Now, two cars strong, the group of friends parked in the area, using their headlights to brighten the area as much as possible. Nothing happened for over an hour, until, from out of the darkness, a lithe bipedal figure stepped into the light from out of the trees. It was clearly not a person. Instead, it was a mixture of human and feline characteristics. Black fur, luminescent yellow eyes, fiendishly long claws, and to top it all off, a long cat's tail. It took several steps before dropping to all fours, lunging at the cars. And according to the story, it successfully damaged the vehicles, slashing and punching with enough force to leave gouges in the paint, dents in the body, and paw prints on the windows. Suffice to say, the youths once more tore out of the area as quickly as they could, their escape accompanied by the beast's high-pitched wails. Authorities mounted a half-hearted search of the area, but to no avail, there was really no documentation. No further evidence was ever found, so the case was blown off and you probably can't find much about it. Now, rumors persisted that the Catman was seen by others. Visitors to the river had allegedly found deer carcasses along its banks in the weeks afterward, maimed as if by a large unknown predator. The following month, on December 7th, 1980, a brother and sister just minding their own business near Short Mountain in Warren County, Tennessee, saw something absolutely uncanny. They were relaxing on the back patio shortly before dusk 
when something appeared in the distance across the partially wooded field. At first, it seemed to be a person, but after studying it for a few seconds, they realized something was wrong. It stood on two feet, but was covered head to toe in light gray hair. Once it reached the pond, only around 100 yards away, the siblings could see that its head resembled that of a cat. The two witnesses watched, mouths agape, as the creature bent towards the pond and began lapping up the water. And as it drank, it revealed a set of long canines, maybe four to five inches long. Then, without so much as a glance in their direction, the figure stood, shambled off in the direction that it had come from, and the entire affair lasted between two and three minutes. Skipping ahead nearly two decades, we find the account of Ray Jones, a woodcarver whose retirement in central Kansas was interrupted by a terrifying attack in 1998. Jones had decided to spend his final years not only sculpting, but tending to a small farm, complete with livestock. According to author Brad Steiger, Jones was working late in his wood carving studio one night in June when he heard commotion outside. It sounded as though something had spooked all the animals on his property simultaneously. Elsie and Etzer, his two Guernsey cows, were vocally agitated. His dog, an Airedale Terrier by the name of Buster, sat upright and began to growl. At the same time, the geese down along the banks of the pond broke into a cacophony of trumpets and squawks. This last aspect alarmed Jones the most because, in his words, there are no watchdogs as good as geese because they are so dang territorial. Jones cautiously set aside his woodworking tools and opened the door stepping into the summer night, and a full moon hung in the sky above, affording excellent visibility to the surrounding farmland. At that moment, Jones's chickens added their voices to the chorus of animal cries. In his mind, the hen house must be under attack by some sort of animal, but likely is not a stray cat or dog. Jones snatched up a stick and stomped towards the hen house entrance, shouting threats as loudly as he could and waving his makeshift weapon to frighten away any potential predators. He reaches the front door of the hen house, immediately realizing that he would need more than a stick for what awaited him inside. He later described the sight to Brad Steiger, claiming that, although it was almost completely dark in the hen house, I felt the hair stand up on the back of my neck when I saw something dark stand up and growl back at me. I'm about 5'11", and it was as tall as I am. Then it charged me, knocking me flat before placing its paws on my chest and looking down at me. I nearly had a heart attack when I found myself staring into the open jaws and pointed fangs of a black panther. I could feel and smell its fetid breath on my face as he sat on my chest, sizing me up for a meal. From out of nowhere, Buster came to Jones's aid, rushing into view to incessantly bark at the intruder. Despite being pinned down by the beast, Jones was now more worried for his dog's safety than his own. He could fend off the creature for a little while, but poor Buster wouldn't be able to withstand more than a casual swipe from one of those monstrous paws. Without any reason, maybe Buster succeeded in scaring it away. The attacker simply rolled off Jones, and instead of landing on four feet, it rose up to stand on its hind legs as if it were the most natural thing in the world. The creature then turned, dropped to a quadruped stance, and fled off into the Kansas night. Jones rushed inside and dialed the sheriff's office, not only to report the incident, but to alert authorities that a large unknown predator was roaming the community and is deemed incredibly dangerous. Of course, Jones was assured that he must have been mistaken. There are simply no Black Panthers anywhere in Kansas. I mean, come on, and a bipedal one? Law enforcement eventually dispatched a deputy to the scene, but he dismissed Jones' experience outright, telling him that he had simply encountered, I don't know, maybe a large, feisty tomcat. Jones was adamant, though, that he had not only been a Black Panther, but that the creature was as comfortable on two legs as it was on four. For lack of a better term, he had faced down a cat person. Concluding his story, Jones stated that, fortunately, 
There were no other reports of such a creature in the area, and I guess he just jumped back into whatever nightmare he jumped out of. Cat people sightings were sporadic through the early years of the 21st century. In 2000, reports emerged from Wisconsin, Vermont, and Springdale Cemetery in Illinois, where several witnesses claimed to spot a massive, powerfully built, cat-like creature darting between the grave monuments. In 2005, a witness residing near the Sierra Nevada mountains in Sonora, California, claimed to have been hanging her laundry out to dry when she saw a peculiar figure lurking about her yard. She had taken a brief break to check on her children's safety, but when she peered around the garage, she saw what she described as a small head, exactly like the shape of a cat, and a humanoid body looking back at her. It stood around 5'7", with orange, white, and black tabby cat markings. Like the Argentinian cat person seen in 72, it wore a dark, form-fitting jumpsuit underneath which the witness could clearly see breasts. Both parties froze. The cat person looked surprised, her ears perking up, and her green almond-shaped eyes widening. She then retreated back around the garage. At the same time, the witness received several impressions regarding the creature's age and intent, leaving her convinced that the being meant her family no harm. For this reason, she failed to further investigate until several hours later. Predictably, the cat person was nowhere to be found. Now, thousands of miles away, another cat person appeared to a 17-year-old Mohammed Azmi in Kedah, Malaysia. He was sleeping in his home when in the wee hours of the morning on September 21st, 2006, the sound of footsteps awoke him. Azmi listened intently as a guttural voice began speaking in a strange language from somewhere over his head. Somehow, the creature dropped from the ceiling and directly into his bedroom. Facing him was a creature he described as black and hairless with the face of a cat. The boy instinctively lunged at the intruder, which bound from the bedroom. He gave pursuit, fighting the creature in the living room. It appeared confused as it frantically searched for an exit. As the young man watched, the creature grew more agitated until, seeking a solution, Asmi rushed to the front door and opened it. The cat person immediately hopped past him, disappearing into the darkness beyond the doorway. Perhaps most recently, Indiana witnesses on a church retreat in late September of 2009 spotted a six-foot-tall cat person. It was evening, and the primary witness, an adult, was playing hide-and-seek with the children around their camping shelter. Shortly after the game began, they stumbled upon a bipedal figure running towards the woods, cutting through the tall grass of a field at the rear of the building. The children were the first to spot the figure. They said that it ran to the tree line with its arms held by its sides before abruptly stopping just short of the forest. Believing this was an adult waiting to be found, the children approached the form, only to have it drop to its belly in the tall grass. The shape shot towards the witness with an almost serpentine grace. The children froze in terror. Luckily, the creature altered course, diverting to another set of trees. When it reached its destination, the thing began climbing the tree trunk until it was out of sight. All present, 15 witnesses in total, described the monster as a deformed cat-like animal. Simultaneously, another child shouted, I see him! When the others looked, however, the kid was pointing at a second figure running in a different direction. A brief pursuit of this new intruder ended when it was lost in the woods. Now, what could these creatures be? Scattered throughout the world's mythologies, we find a few suggestions. Cat therianthropes, humanoids with feline attributes, appear throughout the iconography of ancient Egypt, a culture which revered cats. The most famous examples are the cat or lion-headed goddess named Bast or Bastet and the iconic Sphinx, immortalized in the stone of Giza. Researcher Barton Nunnally mentioned earlier sees early descriptions of the Greek manticore as a possible precedent for modern cat people. Common depictions of the manticore show the hellish combination of a lion's body, a human's face, and in a departure from contemporary sightings, a scorpion's tail. The manticore appears analogous to the Persian Mardkora, which enjoyed feasting upon human blood. 
In indigenous traditions, we find creatures like the Kinnigur. Native Australians believe that this creature sports human limbs, but the body and head of a qual, a marsupial predator related to the Tasmanian devil, which appears vaguely cat-like. Supposedly, tribes in the modern-day Maryland, where the Wicomico Catman appeared in the 1980s, once spoke of a creature similar, which guarded its hunting territory with terrifying ferocity. Cat people may also represent a modern expression of age-old beliefs surrounding gatanthropy. While we are all familiar with legends surrounding lycanthropy, the act of becoming a werewolf Many ancient magic traditions held that human beings with the proper training in black magic could become just about any animal they pleased. Medicine men and women, witches, warlocks, sorcerers, and black magic practitioners, as well as shamans practicing in regions where big cats were more common, often transformed into these predators rather than wolves. This is especially common in South America where shamans might turn into jaguars, or in Southeast Asia, where leopards predominate. A perfect example is the Burmese headhunters of the Myanmar. The Naga also took the heads of tigers and leopards. Some used these totems to become werecats. In fact, one Naga headhunter told Westerners that, My soul does not live in my body. It lives in the leopard. It is not in me now. It visits me in sleep. I meet it in my dreams. If anything happened to my leopard in the day, my soul would come and tell me. I would get the same wounds. Could cat people be a manifestation of similar practices? While human-cat hybrids appear only sporadically in world mythology, cats in general enjoy a long-standing association with the supernatural. Few animals have as many superstitions built around them as cats, who seem to skirt the boundary between our waking world and unseen realities. The close association between cats and witches, for example, can still be seen in Halloween decorations to this day, expressing older beliefs that small animals like cats might serve as witches' familiars or spirit helpers. To these traditions, we can also add modern sightings of large black cats, which appear in areas where no such animals should exist. Reports of such specimens in North America are especially bewildering. While jaguars can be melanistic or entirely black, this coloration is rare, and the range of jaguars rarely extends beyond the lower regions of the southwestern United States. While the U.S. and Canada do have populations of mountain lions to date, there has never been a confirmed case of one with melanism. Simply put, Large black cats, or as cryptozoologists have dubbed them, alien big cats, or ABCs, should not be seen north of Mexico. Yet, wildlife officials are regularly flooded with reports of ABCs, even in places like Ireland, the British Isles, Western Europe, and Australia, where there are no comparable big cat species, and certainly none that should be black. To make matters more mysterious, these large cats often exhibit near-human intelligence, disappear at will, and sometimes leave no footprints behind where they clearly should. They also appear in conjunction with a host of other strange happenings, including Bigfoot reports, fairy folklore, UFO sightings, possessions, and hauntings. In fact, a case could be made that, after anomalous lights, ABCs are the most common phenomena accompanying paranormal activity. For example, during a Minerva, Ohio's 1978 Bigfoot sightings, the large hairy creature was sometimes joined by a pair of large, strange felines. These were witnessed not only by the townspeople, but also by investigator Barbara Galloway, who said that the cats looked mutated, their height and color like a mountain lion's, only with their heads misshapen. Some old North American logging folklore used the term wampus, interchangeably for ABCs and Bigfoot. In reports from the Big Thicket area of Texas, Bigfoot are as common as ghost lights and ABCs, woods, and a black panther which left footprints on their property. Now, these associations continue to this very day. While ABCs are not always explicitly connected to UFOs, the presence of two anomalies in the same area at the same time certainly implies a link. 
Could cat people come from another planet? A handful of accounts do seem to suggest this possibility. Such stories often sit at the more bizarre end of the UFO logical spectrum. Cases involving cat people and flying saucers stretch back to at least the mid 20th century. In 1951, Kathy Connolly of Coventry, England, claimed numerous interactions with beings from other planets. Among these experiences was a meeting aboard a craft with several black-eyed cat people who seemed interested in whether or not she was pregnant. In 1967, Geraldo Bacchiero claimed to spy a disc in the sky that caused his ambulance's electrical systems to fail. It came so close that he was able to see its pilot. The brightly lit interior revealed a humanoid with a cat's face. A similar being appeared in the room of Austin, Texas resident in autumn of 1973, just days after his dramatic 10-minute long UFO sighting. The witness had been reading books on spirituality when a bright light flash illuminated his entire room, leaving behind the head and shoulders of a tawny fur being. The entity seemed highly intelligent, and its face resembled that of a lion's, only with a flattened muzzle. After a few seconds, it kind of just snapped out of existence. Now, in February of 2002, a hiker in Quebec found himself losing consciousness in the wilderness. He eventually collapsed, and when he came to, he was back at home with two friendly female faces gazing into his eyes. Over subsequent visits, the hiker learned that these beings came from another solar system and were visiting Earth to study its life forms. They had happened upon him in the forest several days earlier, where they had presumably rescued him. According to the witness, the two women were black with cat-like faces, ears, and tails. These mysterious figures remained a staple in the witness's life, appearing in disguise at social events and even at his local supermarket. Supposedly, his wife even saw the beings herself before they eventually bid Earth goodbye one year later. Whether this was a hoax, a product of mental illness, or a genuine, if weird, experience is anyone's guess, some of the UFO reports involving cat people add an interesting wrinkle. The alien big cats, or ABCs, and cat people are not extraterrestrials themselves, but are rather being studied by the aliens. This seems to be the case in the encounters of Sarah, Kathy, and Jackie, three college students who saw UFOs over Toronto in the late summer of 1979. The nights of August 2nd through August 4th saw a diverse array of craft flying over the city, culminating in an actual landing the final evening. From the craft came four beings a little more than shadows. Sarah, the primary witness, lost consciousness. She awoke in another space, presumably aboard the ship, from which she could see the ground below. She then blacked out again, waking up just a short distance from where the UFO had landed. After stumbling home, Sarah found her face sunburned and her pupils dilated. Eventually, she consented to hypnotic regression from which she allegedly retrieved memories of her time inside the craft. The entire interior was ephemeral, allowing Sarah to pass her hands through its surface, Accompanying her were seven of the shadowy, nearly two-dimensional figures who explained to her that they were studying a pair of research subjects, herself, and a peculiar cat-like entity that she also saw on board. Sarah's memories concluded with visions of a red alien landscape and vague recollections of various medical procedures. Over the course of several sessions, Sarah also recalled meeting a man in black who threatened her just before he vanished into thin air. Sarah believed that several strange puncture marks on her pinky finger provided proof of the incident. In another example, from April 1990, a young North Carolina girl remembered ascending into the sky in a bright blue beam of light. Once inside the flying saucer, she supposedly met several small humanoids, your classic gray aliens, and what appeared to be several human-alien hybrids complete with wispy white hair. The girl's captors performed an experiment upon her, but it was unlike your classic alien abduction procedures. 
they seemed more interested in her emotions than her physiology. The aliens introduced the girl to a jet black panther, as well as a smaller creature. The beings made the girl watch as the cat eviscerated its prey, bringing her so close to the attack that she was spattered. After this ordeal concluded, she was brought even closer to the panther, now housed in a cage. The girl was instructed to reach inside and pet the beast, and when she refused, the aliens reassured her that it had been sedated. Sure enough, she reached her fingers through the bars and petted the animal, which remained perfectly calm. She was then returned home. Now, there is little evidence to validate her story. Perhaps it should be treated as a religious experience rather than a literal occurrence. Either way, the story was enough to impress celebrated alien abduction researcher Bud Hopkins, who presented it at the annual MUFON Symposium that year. Whether from this Earth or another planet, it seems as if cat people are here to stay. Exactly what they represent, flesh and blood creatures, aliens, demons, symbolic manifestations of the collective unconscious remains uncertain. What we can be sure of is that people who do come face to face with these beings remained forever changed by their encounters, sometimes with these scars to prove it. But more importantly, what do you think? Is there actual evidence for cat-human hybrids to have really existed? Is this episode the cat's meow? Or could all this be easily written off as fabrications and melodramatic fictitious tales? I'll let you be the judge. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, be sure to go ahead and smack that like and subscribe button for content just like this. As always, I love you all. Keep an open mind, and I'll catch you guys in the very next episode.